Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. You loved our next guest on The Morning Show, The L Word, and now you can see Janita Gavankar in the beautifully grounded new sports drama starring Ben Affleck, The Way Back. Please welcome the wonderful Janita Gavankar. Let's hear it. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, congratulations on this movie. Um, Thank I you. I love this movie. I love Gavin O'Connor's work. He is the only person who can do this. He surely is the only person who can do this. He <laughs> somehow breathes new, dramatic, grounded life into what you feel like would be a tired old sports movie. Yeah, but he kind of does that over and over again. If you look at his other movies, you're like, that sounds like a terrible idea. Miracle Warrior. This, yeah, yeah. The logline for these films, it's like, two brothers have to fight in a, in a UFC match. It's called Warrior. You're like, that does not sound something like something realistic. Right, and but then it's you turn, so good. <laughs> then you turn Warrior on, and the first scene is 12 minutes of Nick Nolte barely audible crying, and you're like, what is this? What is <laughs> I film? love this. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. the same is said for The Way Back, where it's like, you know it's about an alcoholic just based off of the trailers, yes. but they really get into it mm -hmm. in oh, yeah. this film. Yeah, and it doesn't, and it breaks format, you know. Um, we all know the, the sort of sports movie format, you know. Are they going to win? Who knows? You know, it's like, it's like, it's, it's kind of what they all are, you know. The underdogs beat the odds. Will they ever? I've never seen that story before. But, um, but that is such a small part of what this film is. And, um, and also, right when you think that might be the ending, it certainly is not. And, uh, you know, it just really uses finding oneself and, and winning as an elegy. You know, that's like, that's... And a distraction, and right? distraction. It's, so much of, a, of it is about how it is a dis it, while it is helping him in a way, it is a distraction from the real work that he has to do on himself. Well said. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, You're so the first person who's literally said that to me so well in an interview when we've talked about this a lot. Yeah. Really? I feel like that's, I mean, if you know anything about rehab and, you know, PTSD and trauma, that's a lot of, you know, what people do when yeah. they're trying to get over things. Yeah. You distract yourself with work, with with a new relationship, all of that stuff. Yeah. And then it always ends up coming back coming to Coming back you. if yeah. you do not work on it constantly. Yeah. yeah. It's a moving target. Um, so what made you want to be a part of this? Were you familiar with Gavin's work prior to The Way Back? Yes, yeah. I was. Um, I'd never heard of Ben, but Gavin yeah, seemed guy. really I talented. Newcomer? Um, yeah, really? it seems like he's going to be okay. I don't know. <laughs> You know, um, but basically, very brave of Gavin to cast this newcomer. For yeah, this, I know, for this really big took role. a chance. Yeah, you know, and the studio as well. Just really, I can't believe they went for it. I will say one thing about the studio. Jokes aside, um, this is I've done a lot of independent film. This was as close to an indie film feeling on set as you could ever have had on a studio film. I can't believe it felt as intimate and small as it did. Mm. And um, I mean, it just it's, tells you that Warner Brothers knows how great Gavin is. And they have a trust with, with Ben and Gavin oh, yeah. as well, right? Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. I think they, I, I don't know if they did The Accountant. With they did. Two, they did, right. Well, so they have, they have a working relationship. And yeah. Ben directs all of his movies for Warner Brothers as well. Yeah, are they all with Warner Brothers? You just I know think, everything. I think most I'm of them are. Like, I, I think, I think most of them are. You're like a walking are. film school dude. Yeah, it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for this. It's bad for everything else. Yeah. yeah, everything else is like, could you talk about something else, please? <laughs> um, did you audition for the role? I did. So, what was the audition like? I'm, was it was like a long process where you had no, actually. So, um, I read with Wendy, the brilliant casting director, um, who this is. I first of all, she's brilliant, um, but she casts a ton of comedy. So, if you look at this cast. Everybody has crazy acting chops, but they also have comedy chops. And that, I, I think, is what really makes this film work because it is so heavy, but there's so much levity, and there's a really kind, a really specific kind of performer who can find those moments and really grab onto them. Um, so, yeah, so I think that was a really smart choice. That is fascinating because you are quite funny right now. I mean, First of it, all... In the sense, and I don't mean that to kiss your ass. I mean that in the sense that, like, you're quick and you've got wit and you're... You're, you're, you're nailing this interview. <laughs> I do my best. Uh, but that, that isn't necessarily something that comes across in, in the movie or what the movie is about. Yet I right. kind of understand what you mean. You don't really want a performer 
Like knowing how knowing how to find humor is also just knowing how to be grounded and, and truthful, how to right? See so the, the layers of a situation. Yes. Sorry. So the best no, the, the best um, comedy is just truth, as we know. It's funny because it's true. The thing that makes you laugh from your gut is something that you know to be true and you can't deny it, and it's almost uncomfortable. Um, and also, life is genreless. You know, every day of our lives is a comedy and a drama simultaneously. So it's really helpful when you have something at, that, that is very heavy to kind of load it with all of these these um, performers who are able to bring levity to it. Did you find that you were looking for levity in these scenes with, with Ben? You know, yeah, 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 I guess so. You know, I guess I say I allow for it, right? You don't know what's going to happen. The point is you like going with the plan and then just whatever happens, happens. And then, um, you know, Ben and I have a lot of, love we adore each other this is just my this is my dude right there that's my <laughs> that's my guy um and i think you can see it you know we're super shiny for each other and and that's also just f- works in these characters they're obviously still in love with each other and and angela my character wants what's best for him so very badly um she just wants lightness she just wants lightness, you know? So a little bit of lightness in her feet is is um, was mandatory, I think. Yeah, that's true. She doesn't, as, as heavy as all of the situations are that she is involved in, she never approaches them with a heavy touch, you know? Yeah. She can handle it when it goes that way, but it seems like she's just trying to sort of maintain on a certain, on a certain level. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And also she knows the best way to talk to her man, yeah. you know? <laughs> and it's, it's bees with honey. Bees with honey, you know. Um, had you had did you know Ben at all prior no. to doing this? No, I met him. Um, my first meeting was I didn't tell you the audition process. You asked and I did not answer. So I I read with Wendy and then um, I took a meeting with Gavin just one on one and it was hyper emotional. It was very emotional. Why is that? Um, we just talked about who these people were and you know I talked about. My uh, a lot of times when I'm sitting with a director, I want to make sure that they are okay with my way into a character, so we're communicating in the same way. So it's sort of like if you imagine like a character is a house, but there are different ways to get into the house. There are different doors, and I um, sort of explain the door that I'm walking in and the foyer. <laughs> I don't know. I'm making no, a weird I, analogy, I, I, but you know what I, I mean. Get it, yeah. Like I like to make sure that we're on the same page. Um. Because if it's not what they're looking for, then one, they can tell me and I can adjust on the spot. Or two, it's good to know if I don't like their take, I probably don't want to work on it, you know? Right. Like, this might not be a good fit, you know? Um, it could be two people butting heads for three months. What's the point? Yeah. What's the point? And also, it's whatever's best for the project. So, you know, it's good to be really transparent. So when you say the the going through the door. Are you talking about process, or are you just mainly talking about your interpretation? My interpretation of the character right. and what I what I personally identify with within that character, and maybe like some of my references that I will use in substitute in like the substitution method. What is this? This is like first of all, rest in peace, James Lipton. Oh. <laughs> this is literally like us doing what he he um, gave us. Okay, so. There is a technique called substitution. It's a very tried and true. Yes, I got some nodding heads over there. Are you in theater school? Yes. All right, New Yorker. Okay. So, um, so essentially, it's like you might not have lost a, you might not have lost a husband, but you have lost someone in your life, or you've lost a animal. Even do you have any grief that you have felt in your life? Yes. Attach it here. That husband is now your dog. Whatever it takes to find the truest thing that you have experienced in your short time on this earth. And then you just substitute the two and then that's your way in. And then you experience the rest. However, it's going to come out of you. Right. Can I say something? Yes. No, no. Your words you, are, no, no. You, you actors are crazy. <laughs> We're crazy people. Crazy people. Crazy people. Because, and, and, I, and I don't mean this in a pejorative way. I admire it. It's, it's, but it's unbelievable to me that you have chosen a profession where you're like, I'm going to do this project where I relive my traumas <laughs> and I'm going to walk through life consistently reliving my traumas for the purpose of this project. Well, it's really funny you say that because it serves many purposes. If you want to be a complete narcissist, you know, you can just like trot out your traumas. That's really not what I'm in it for. My favorite um, professor in theater school said 
Well, I have like two things that I had two favorite professors and one said, um, you know, it's our job to give voice to the voiceless. And there is something about um, acting, writing, directing that is um, humanitarian in that we really are showing people themselves when they're not, they don't have the means or the courage or in a situation where they can't speak for themselves. So that's beautiful. And I mean, we're all, many of us are trying to do that. My other favorite professor said, you know, sometimes you drop in and it is transcendent. Mostly it's not, you still gotta do your job. Yeah. Right, most of you're, <laughs> you know you're, I mean? you're, like, you're trying to do that, use that substitution, but really there's too many. It's uh, both, it's yeah, both. You know, you gotta both. actually do the work and be a professional person and that's it, you know. Right. But do you ever find that sometimes, and obviously no, and as a professional actor, you don't want to cop to this, but using substitution methods can get in the way of not necessarily being a professional person, but like you find that catharsis, you find that moment, but you actually can't let it go or you are reliving something that you don't sure. necessarily want to relive. Yeah, sure. But like, okay. So, you know, when people say their method. Sure. Uh, it's not real. It's already exhausting. It's already exhausting saying it's gotten such a bad rep because it's like improv. Were there was there any improv on set? It's like the same sort of it's, bad rep. Like people don't really know what it means. Yeah, they don't know what it means. It. But also, like, first of all, it's a very male thing. Like, have you ever heard of a female method act? Like, we're not allowed to do that because otherwise we'll just be called ter you know, word I probably can't say on the show. So but I think like Robert Pattinson just said this thing recently, was like you don't really hear when someone says that. Nobody's being method when they're playing someone really lovely. You know, like, I'm sorry, just give me a second. I'm, I'm playing someone really wonderful. I just need a moment. You know, like, nobody's doing that. You know, they're like, they're really, like, enjoying being an asshole is the truth. You know what I mean? So, like, that's all nonsense. You don't, you know, I don't need to do that. I'm not trying to work with people who got to do that. You know, um, Ben and I were really honest with each other about what we were going through personally in our lives in that moment. Um, some moments that were very similar. Um, we were really honest about the people in our lives that we saw in each other's characters. Mm. I took a lot of s wonderful things that he said about um, beloved women in his life and all these strong women that he he knows and loves and have been there for him. And I just went, love that. <laughs> and I was like, tried to put him in Angela, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's really what, I mean, outside of substitution, that's really what I think... I as far as I know, acting kind of is, is taking as much as you can and absorbing it and then trying to sort of subconsciously use that when you're in Sure, yeah. I, listen, everybody's different. I'm not going to tell you how to do your job it if you're an actor. Things. It's Acting is many things. Um, most of it is learning your lines. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just... Be professional, people. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Show up. Show up and show up. Make everybody know your else lines, have to do less work. Stand on your mark. Yeah. You know, um, uh, but don't ask too many questions. Yeah, don't ask. I don't know. It's yeah. You can ask. Yeah, for when it's when it's my set, I'm like, you can ask me anything. But the thing you said of like reliving trauma, etc. Um, as a just as an artist in general, I've been making a bunch of things for a really long time, and and. That's absolutely part of it for me is like, I have to get this out of my body or I'll die. And then I make a thing, <laughs> you know, um, and it can be a music video or, uh, you know, I just made a short film and, and that it's thing premiering is, at South by Southwest. It right? is. Yes, it is not premiering, but we are. Oh, excuse me. Going. Sorry. You it's were okay. going to be at South by yeah, Southwest. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk to me about what the film is? For sure. It's called Stucco. Yeah. And um, essentially, uh, my, it was my creative partner, Russo, and I made it together. And um, it's essentially a woman who is feeling a little agoraphobic and not dealing with some of the things in her life. And uh, it's keeping her shut in her new home. Um, she hangs up a piece of art on her wall, but the hammer goes through. Sounds like it's hollow. And as she kind of wonders what's on the other side, she starts losing her goddamn mind. <laughs> and it gets real weird. <laughs> are you are you playing the main character? Or are you yeah. Just... Yeah, I shot it in my house, oh. you know, um, called all my friends. They played a bunch of parts. You hardly even see any of them. The big joke is like, how does this this no budget indie film have this level of a cast? And the truth is, really talented people want to get weird, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
you give them the space to get weird. I mean, that's why they got into this to begin with. Yeah, we're weirdos. Weird. Yeah. yeah. You said uh, just a second ago that uh, one of the reasons that you make stuff is because it's in your body and it, you have to get it out in some way. Can you yeah. talk? That's something that I very much relate to. Can you talk about uh, about that a little bit? Yeah, more? you know. I mean, everybody has has their own tech. Hopefully, people have techniques and tools and ways to get anxieties or any kinds of experiences that are traumatic out of themselves. Whether it's at the talking with the therapist or whatever. But if you're an artist, you sort of, I think, have a responsibility to use the work to get it out, mm. because then you can let the work communicate for you and other people who maybe might not have the same means to do that can see themselves in it, right? right. Um, we have a, a very long prosthetic tongue that was made <laughs> in, this is like a spoiler, in um, stucco. And it represents many things. And it is a very strange short film, but what, as I was having people read it, the th the biggest word that was being repeated back to me was this is very relatable and we were holding on to that like if we can if we can pull off this strange magic trick and still have it be incredibly relatable to people then we've we've really accomplished something it kind of goes back to this movie as well i mean yeah. there's a sense of like the strange magic trick of a sports movie, which is operates within the formulaic and in some ways the cliche, but the magic trick to there is making that believable once yeah. again and keeping it grounded. Absolutely. Russo is my creative partner. He and I love magical realism. We love using it. We love the genre that and all of the subgenres that really are in the magical realism world because it m allows you to speak an analogy and find even more truths that you don't have to just like you don't have to be so on the nose. You can have a strange body horror moment and people can say, oh my gosh, I really identified, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, I think we have time for a few questions from the audience. There's a question from Twitter and it's, uh, you've been solidified in the Star Wars universe as an original and iconic character. Do you have anything in your home of the character uh, Eden Versio? Close, Eden Versio. Fuck, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you Trekkie? What's happening in this chair right now? I'm neither. Okay. Sorry. What are you? Do you like sci-fi? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, was a, that was a lie, y'all. <laughs> that was a big old lie. Depends. That's, that's all right. What does that mean? Depends. Um, I, I like Star Wars to a degree. Stop. You are hurting yourself. I like, Anybody who's watching, and there are many people who like Star Wars, are super pissed at you I right like now. I like Star Trek as well. In small doses. Cool. Okay. Like so I'm next, gonna answer like, this really like quick. Next, <laughs> next, I'm gonna keep digging this hole because you really are. I love sci-fi. I love fantasy. I keep falling into these genres because I love it so much. So, do I have something? I'm just gonna answer this. I'm gonna save you. Here we go. Uh, yes, I absolutely do. Um, I have her uniform, but I also have her helmet, and it's one of the first things you see when you come in the house. Really? Yeah. Where, where, like in your like foyer? Like front and center, yeah. <laughs> it's like you walk in and there's a sort of sideboard or whatever you want to call it, and it's like, bam, right there. Big old helmet. It's her, it's her TIE fighter helmet. Did you? I'm sure you know what that is. Yeah, of course. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> TIE fighter helmet. Uh, did, you, did you work hard? Did you fight to get into Star Wars? Was that something oh, that was a dream I would have cut someone to get that if I had to. Are Me, you kidding same, me? Same, hard same. Me too. Yeah, hard same. I'm taking that hard same. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't have to cut anyone, thankfully. Um, it's, first of all, you, you obviously don't know what, the, I'm just gonna tell people, <laughs> okay. I am the protagonist <laughs> in a game called Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's also a video game. Don't yeah me. <laughs> Um, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'm so happy that I got to do it because I'm a huge gamer as well, mm -hmm. specifically story first deep narrative video games. So this being able to be a part of the galaxy in this medium is like the melding of the two best things for me. What are the what game are you playing right now? Well, I just um, I just hundred percented control. Just went platinum. <laughs> you don't know what that means. That's fine. And uh, means I played a lot of it. That's what it means. Um, Control is made by a really cool studio called Remedy, mm. and they make very cool projects. I Control mean, is a it's a big game that kid just yeah, came out, right? Yeah, like it's a triple A game. It's people were really excited year. about it. Yeah. Yeah, people who like video games. Yeah. 
that's not meant to be condescending. These are like the most vague things that you could say. Oh yeah, that just came out, right? Oh yeah, people are really excited about that one. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah I <laughs> this I'm is like just Trump right now. Like, like a lot of people. You. Lot of people so like sorry. it. A lot of people like yeah, this thing. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people like it. A lot of people talking about control. Yeah. <laughs> I am trying. <laughs> I, can, I can see. <laughs> I, I, there, there are things that I, that I wished I loved more for the purposes of conversations like this, not just on this stage, but well, out in the world. And that is video games, great. sci-fi, great. and sports. Okay. I'm, I'm two out of three. I don't, I don't sport. I don't sport either. I don't do it. Um, but sure, sport, great. Um, if you want to get into games, I will give you a short list of really um, short games. Indie games, small ones that, that you should play because they're amazing. Do I have to like find clues and move around the rooms and like? Yes, talk they to are interactive stories. Oh. You're killing me, dude. I just want to. If I'm gonna play a video game, I just want to blow shit up. <laughs> I got a lot of those for you too, man. Those are cool. Like I remember the uh, Tenchu Stealth Assassin days of PlayStation. Was That's it before my time? And. Um, I didn't play Resi those. The Resident Evil game. Yeah. Which I, which I love. Actually, they just did a remaster last year, and it's incredible. Uh, those games were pretty cool. Yeah, they're but still that's cool. But just like walking around and shooting zombies. Yeah, that, there's there are a lot of shooting zombie games on the market. Metal Gear. Those, Solid. So those games were when I was done. Okay. So I never got into those. Okay. But those seem like Come back to us. things, right? Come back to us, man. Okay. <laughs> We'll take in. you. A <laughs> uh, couple questions from the audience. The first one is from Kim, right here. Hi. Hi. Um, congratulations on the way back. Thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thank you. Um, please reveal something about Echo. Ooh. Well, I'm okay. So I'm <laughs> slow turn. <laughs> he just went. That was me going. You felt this? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so basically, uh, I'm staying in town because I'm about to shoot a pilot for NBC called Echo. Um, if you liked Quantum Leap, now you're going to get to do it with the team. I don't know oh, if they're going to like that show. I said that. Be but, um, yeah, it's cool. Uh, Reed Scott just joined. Um, I have a table read at 2 p.m. today. I have no idea who the rest of the cast is besides Reed. Um, nobody's told me anything. And then I have a fitting. That's what's happening. <laughs> it's but time it's, travel, it's, right? It's time travel. Yeah. Um, and the script is so fun. And David Frankel is directing. Um, David did an episode of The Morning Show with us. Um, so it's a little bit like keeping it in the family. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. How was working on The Morning Show? Did you like working on that show? Oh, it's insane. I just worked on it yesterday. Oh, right. Because they're doing a second season, second right? Second season. Yeah. Um, it's incredible. It's, uh, there are, I mean, we don't even have time for me to tell you all the cool shit that happens when you go to the morning show set. One of them, try to keep it short, is there are two kinds of um, production happening simultaneously. We are shooting a show within a show. So there is a producer that's calling the show as if it's a morning show, kind of like this, right? So there's a three camera setup. There's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. Hey. So, there's somebody somewhere that is calling what those cameras are. Camera one, camera two, camera three. So that's happening at the same time as us shooting a multi-camera drama. And it's, it's wild. The first day of production, we were like sitting with teleprompters and doing the morning show thing. And then I, I, there's like so many cameras in, happening at the same time. It's just, it's wild. It's a very fancy show. Well, that's the one thing. I mean, I, I loved the first season of The Morning Show, but one of the things that I did love about it was it felt like watching uh, like a $30 million romantic comedy from 2004 <laughs> where they just like threw money at like a normal movie. And like normal movies, they, those movies don't exist anymore. They no longer exist. Nothing has that polish or that yeah. scene. Everything yeah. has to move much more fa much more quickly yeah. and they can't light as much whereas watching the morning show I was like oh you guys got oh, money for this we got all of the monies <laughs> and uh and yeah and I've been on m all the monies show and none of the monies shows yeah. and um you know and and in the end it doesn't matter how much money you have if the project is great if it's written well and if there's a l love put into it you're going to be fine and this has both it really does and 
I mean, the world told us, you know, that we were nominated for Golden Globe. And I mean, so many people got all, so many statue nominations and a bunch of statues. And, um, and you can't buy those, no matter how much money you put into a project. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one more question. This one's from Nick. Hi, you're Hi. fantastic. <laughs> um, on a more serious note, how did you handle entering more intimate moments with Ben Affleck? Um, well, it didn't feel, it was just like that from the second we met each other, you know? Um, it's, you, first of all, everybody's like, oh yeah, they're so brave, they're so courageous. Everybody says these things. We've heard it so many times, that's why you're laughing, because it's true, right? Um, but, that we kind of made a pact that we were gonna go there and that we were safe with each other to do it and Gavin let us know that we were. And, um, you know, when you look into that dude's eyes, he is so with you that it's just a very easy, it's a very easy place to be, yeah. Women say that about my eyes as well all the time, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, yeah. It's a very easy place to a be. A very easy place to be just in your eyes. Kill me for saying that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. But, like, but, you know, when you're on a Gavin O'Connor set, no matter what you do, the only, the only the truest moments are what make it to the cut. So, and also, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff on the cutting room floor in this movie. And, you know, on the day you're like, oh, but it felt so juicy and you're, we were really going for it and all this stuff. But like you're saying, you're saying so much without saying anything most of the time that if you actually, if the characters are actually saying what they mean, it's almost less interesting. And that's the stuff that just kind of got cut out. Well, that was stuff that I was expecting while I was watching the movie and I was happy that it wasn't in it, but I kept expecting Ben's big moment, right? Ben's big Oscar speech of some kind, whether it's as the coach leading the kids or a sort of collapsing on the floor crying for who he could have been or who he is now. And the movie always cuts away just right as something like that is getting revved up, yeah. right? Which is so much so much smarter because you're not, you don't suddenly, I feel like we're all fairly well aware of what a vanity project looks like now. And so this movie very quickly removed This was an anti-vanity project. Yeah. And, um, you know, my last day on the film, uh, Ben and I were sort of like hanging out and he was like, I feel good, you know, I really feel good on, I feel like great on this. Um, sort of like for the first, which now he's been really vocal about, so I feel okay saying this. He was like, I feel different on this one. Mm. Um, he feel he was said that he, he really felt like he was reinvigorated as an actor. And um, this man's been working since he was 10 years old, yeah. maybe younger. So for him to say that, you know, it's, it, um, I hope you can tell. Well, it's no mall rats, but it's, no, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> um, you know what I told him? I actually told him like, What's the one where he and Matt are like, they have wings or Dogma. something? Dogma. Dogma. movie, yeah. I was like, I actually really like that. And he was like, really? And I was like, that was great. And I was like, also like, Chasing Amy, isn't that, that's like iconic. And he's like, it's iconic? I was like, yeah, dude. Yeah, that huge. shit is iconic. Also, there were no LGBTQ. Like, first of all, yeah. we didn't have the words LGBTQ. I mean, the letters. We had a very short alphabet at that point. And no content for anybody anywhere in in the community so yeah it's iconic yeah why am i it's like i'm fighting with him <laughs> like if he saw this he'd be like are we in a fight do you want me to be ben right now and you can yell at me a little no, bit it's fine it's fine you are too your eyes are just too too dreamy i can't oh you. oh on that note the way back <laughs> comes out this friday right it comes out Friday? Yeah, Friday. Please um, go see it. Please tell me what you think. Everybody who's watching, it's, you can find me on all the, the social needs. Just tell me what you think. Genuinely, it is so wonderful. I'm, it is such I'm a really great movie. glad you think so. Uh, it is one of the movies that I finished. I was like, oh, they did a great job on that. I'm happy for everybody involved. Good work. Thank you. Uh, Janina Gavankar, everybody, let's hear it. Yeah. <laughs>